Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today I'm going to answer the question of does the older APUs work with the new Ryzen B550 chipset? Keep watching to find out. Spoiler alert, the fact that the PC is on and there's a display on it is pretty much a giveaway. But for those of you who are a little bit more interested to know the pros and cons, then keep on watching and we'll go through some of the things we've used here, the BAS revisions, etc. So obviously if you've got exactly the same setup, this is definitely gonna work. Um, obviously, if you've got newer BIOSes after the date of this video, then obviously your mileage may vary if they do remove support. But as it seems at the moment, this particular board, this is the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, which is a uh, relatively budget offering from MSI, but does actually support a lot of the latest and greatest processors and is certainly a excellent board to choose. But obviously with the new Ryzen 5000 processors coming out, maybe you don't wanna go into the 3000 range. So a cheap APU is a really good option, especially also when we've got new graphics cards coming out towards the end of this month, uh, both from Nvidia and AMD. So it makes a good choice to maybe just stick in an APU, get things up and running, and then wait for these other processors to arrive on the scene. So anyway, to break it down, so this is a Ryzen 3 2200G, which is the Zen Plus. So I'm pretty much assuming that anything after that will be fine as well. So 3200G and obviously subsequent models, 2400G and the 3400G should be all absolutely fine. The fact that it recognizes the 2200G, which is basically a first generation Ryzen processor, means that you can pretty much stick anything you want on this motherboard. And we've also tried a 1700X, various other processors, a Ryzen 5 1600, Ryzen 5 2600, and they've all been absolutely fine, at least on this particular BIOS revision. So looking a little bit closer at CPU-Z, we can see it's using the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G, uh, max TDP, 65 watts, and it's a Raven Ridge processor. So again, technically this shouldn't work on here. It isn't actually supported, but it does seem that AMD have kind of turned a bit of a blind eye and allowed manufacturers to pretty much support whatever they want to. At least that is how it seems currently. Whether they may tighten down those restrictions later on with BAS updates, uh, again, don't have a crystal ball. I can't be entirely sure of that. All I can state on is at the moment, this actually works absolutely fine. And actually works really well. This particular motherboard from MSI actually does support a feature called Overclock Genie or OC Genie, which is in the BIOS. And you can basically just flick a switch and it will overclock the processor to a known kind of quantity to make it overclocked. So this is put it up to 3750 megahertz, which is 50 megahertz over what the boost speed is of the single core. So to have all four cores, 3.75, yeah, 3750, yeah, that's pretty decent and it works for me. And it does give you a little bit of an overall boost. Looking at the temperatures, we have run some tests on here, Cinebench R20, um, also PC Benchmark, which isn't great, but kind of, it does have its purposes. Um, processor didn't get hotter than 55 degrees, and that's using the Rafe Stealth cooler. We have been using the IC Graphite Thermal Pad, which has been absolutely fine, and actually I've been swapping this out, this processor, between different A520 motherboards, which uh, you can check out up here if you want to, and we've got some other B550 boards. So I've been going through and gradually testing each one, and using these thermal pads actually is a really, really good idea. So if you want to get them, I'll leave some affiliated links in the video description, you can pick them up for yourself. But moving on to the system, so like I said, it's the B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. It's a Ryzen 3 2200G. Memory-wise, we've got some Corsair LPX. This is the uh, DDR4 3000. Although for some bizarre reason, I do find this with Corsair RAM, they don't always pick up the XMP frequencies particularly well. So in XMP uh, version two on this particular motherboard, it picked up as being 2933, which uh, I'm totally happy with, and picked up the exact right speeds for the RAM. There was an option for XMP1, which is 2800. For some reason, it just didn't want to see it as 3000, which it is actually supposed to be rated for, but again, it's a, a few megahertz, so I'm not particularly bothered by that. It still performs very, very well. Storage-wise, we're using our old favorite, the Silicon Power NVMe drive. This is the A60 drive, and it's a 512. Nice and quick, gets the job done. We'll look at some of the specs that now. So if we go into PC Benchmark, and you can see the results now. Prior to this, we did a test on the A520. Like I said, you can uh, check out from the links up there. And um, we've got a, a very slight improvement. The desktop, I think on the last one, it registered at about 78%. Workstation, I think was the same at about 18. Gaming, I think was 18. So we've increased a couple of percentages on there. So with that little overclock, it has given us a, a very, very slight boost. All green lights there, apart from graphics, obviously, because the graphics on board is pretty poor. 
but overall we've got some pretty decent results. So PC performing way above expectations. So this has actually put it into the 89th percentile of processors. So that's a pretty good outing for the processor. Again, we could really overclock this a lot further if we wanted to. There's plenty of headroom actually in the motherboard and to be honest, probably the chip with a little bit of extra cooling, but for demonstration purposes and just to say it works, uh, this is as far as we're gonna go. The actual Vega 8 has done really well again. It's in the 89th percentile. The storage done very, very well, 82nd percentile, 223% above average, so that's uh, done particularly well. And the Corsair Vengeance LPX, it does register there as DDR4-3000, but again, it's only running, from what the motherboard says, at 2933 megahertz. So again, uh, outstanding result there and towards the top of the table. So overall, the system is actually performing pretty much as, uh, well, as expected and above. So that's a, a really good turnout. Again, looking at the temperatures, uh, max out 55 degrees. Idle low has been 26 degrees in a roughly 22, 23 degree room. And at the moment it's idling quite happily at around about 26 degrees. So it's actually running nice and cool, doing exactly what it's meant to, no crazy voltage spikes or anything like that. And uh, yeah, just running really, really well. I'm not gonna do any game testing, etc. because essentially it's a 2200G. It isn't really designed for games, it's designed for just uh, basic computer use. But certainly um, you can run things like Rocket League and things like that, at low resolutions, etc. But the main takeaway from this is that the 2200G is a fantastic partner for this particular motherboard on the B550s and essentially across the range the A520s and B550s don't seem to have quite the draconian drawbacks of processor compatibility that we may have been led to believe from the AMD slides. So hopefully that's answered a question for you. Uh, if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.